everyone, it's Brynn. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. This is a pretty exciting video. It's kind of like a tag. I have five or six questions to answer and they are all about the books I want to read before 2021. Also, if you hear clinking and clanging in the background, Nick is working out. I'm in the middle of a very busy month, really. So I'm just capitalizing on this time to film a video whenever I can. So without further ado, let's get into these questions about the books I want to read before the end of the year. The first question is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Yes, I'm in the middle of three or four books right now. I'll mention a couple in particular that come to my mind. One, I'm reading Ryan Holiday's Daily Stoic, and I'm counting that as a book because I'll finish it by the end of the year. And it's just like a passage on stoicism that you can like read every day. It's just little tidbits of wisdom from Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, different uh, Greek, Greek or Roman stoics of philosophy. So really enjoyed that. I am also slowly reading. It's a history book that my brother Colton gave me and it is The Norman Conquest. I believe it's by Mark Morris. I will, I mean, insert it here. But this kind of became a bedtime reading book for me because not that, I mean, it is very interesting, but it helped me kind of go to sleep at night. No offense or anything. It has been really interesting for a book that is just completely and totally about history. It's been well written to where it keeps me engaged. It keeps me interested in the story. And it's about the happenings of the early 11th century when the Normans from the France area that had kind of been uh, occupied by Vikings came down to England and conquered. There's so many like power plays that were going on and honestly life in the 1000s must have just been like so exhausting because they had power changes constantly like all the time but it's been interesting to learn about makes me feel like I'm increasing my brain size. And then a nonfiction Kindle book that I'm in the middle of right now is Come As You Are by Emily it starts with an N. I'll insert it here. And I'm still really enjoying it, but I've just been needing my books to like really keep me engaged. I've been doing a lot of reading for class. So when I'm reading for enjoyment, I have wanted a good fiction book. And I'm just going to be fully transparent with you. Sorry if there's like glare. I'm filming at a different time than I usually do. If I pull up the Kindle app on my phone, I want, I don't want to say the word trashy, but I want a highly entertaining, usually romance novel, and that's just what I've gravitated towards. But I'm still really enjoying this. This is on the psychological side of sexual health and well-being. It's really entertaining. It's written in a very readable format. Lacking it just need to get around to finishing it. And then I'll just mention the series that I'm in the middle of right now. I'm almost done with the Throne of Glass series. I read the first book, which is The Assassin's Blade. It's kind of like a book of short stories in this world. And I read it at the end of 2019. So all of 2020, I've been reading Throne of Glass. I read all of them except this last book here, <laughs> Kingdom of Ash. I love this series. People can hate on it, but YA fantasy that's heavy on the romance, sign me up. I'll kind of give you a little brief summary. But we start the series following Selena Sardothian, and she is an assassin. She's 17-ish in the beginning, and she gets caught and is sent to this salt mine as a slave. And in the first book, Throne of Glass, we follow her as the king's son, Prince Dorian needs her to compete in a contest to become the king's champion. Selena gets out of the salt mines and we find out more about her past and her skills as an assassin and she is just such an incredibly tough, talented, lethal character 
And of course, there are tons and tons of characters in this seven book series. There's tons and tons of opportunities for adventure and romance and politics, and I have so, so enjoyed it. I should say Throne of Glass is by Sarah J. Mass. I also started the Witcher series by Andrzej Sapkowski. He's Polish, I believe, and these books are initially written in Polish and then translated to English. But the Witcher series is so popular. They've had their video game series and then just recently their Netflix series. So I've been reading the books. I read the first two books in the series, which are books of short stories, and they are The Last Wish and The Sword of Destiny. And I really enjoyed those. I've been a little slower getting through the actual books in the series. I've enjoyed reading them, but they have not kept me as engaged as some of the other books I've read this year. We follow Geralt, who is a witcher. And a witcher is someone who has gone through genetic mutations to make themselves better at killing monsters. In this world, there's different species of monsters that have run-ins with humanity. They're not even always all that dangerous. They're just kind of like pests sometimes. And they can call a witcher to come exterminate them pretty much. We follow Geralt who uh, I love. Henry Cavill as Geralt. I'm going to insert a picture here because it is just perfect in the series on Netflix. And we also follow a sorceress, Yennefer, and the Child of Destiny, Ciri. Their world has a lot of political back and forth between, I don't know if you would call them kingdoms, but just different cities in this country. And there's a lot of war between these kingdoms. And we watch as our characters kind of try to bring peace. These books honestly confuse me sometimes. And I heard that in Polish literature, it is just like a big thing for characters to have big page long dialogue with themselves. And I don't know, it's just been a little like different for me to read, but I've enjoyed it. I just have a very firm picture in my head of Geralt. And when the books that everything else is based on kind of questions that, it takes away from my enjoyment. I don't want to say that, but I'm just like so team Geralt and he's been a little boring in the books. Like there's not enough monster hunting in these books. Okay, there's my piece on that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Question two is, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I don't have a book that I read every year or anything, but there is a book that I want to reread at the end of this year. And it is, I have it. And it is City of Thieves by David Benioff, who was one of the writers for Game of Thrones. Um, this has nothing to do with Game of Thrones. This is a historical fiction, and we follow our main character, Lev, who is a teenager in Russia during the Second World War. His family has fled to somewhere that's safer, but he has stuck around because he feels like he has come of age and is able to handle all of the terrible war crimes going on in Russia from Germany during this time. This book definitely has a comedic element to it. So there are some goings on and Lev gets arrested and in this like very strict wartime, his crimes, the penalty is execution. So he ends up in jail with this deserter from the war and they go to this government figure who's having a wedding for his daughter during this very tough time in winter in Russia where everyone's starving. He asked them to go find him a dozen eggs. So Lev and Kolya, I believe is his friend's name, go on a journey to find a dozen eggs in Russia during World War II in the middle of winter. And it's also during uh, some a German-like invasion during this time. So, so much, so much going on. This is just a story of courage and coming of age and I loved reading this last year. I gave this book five stars last year. I read it around September and the whole time I was reading it, I was like, oh, I've got to read this book again when there is snow on the ground. So I, this is not an autumnal book. This is a wintry book, but it will be perfect for when it finally gets cold outside. Question three, is there a new release you are still waiting for? 
we will just mention the big elephant in the room that is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, my most anticipated book of the year. This is the fourth book in his Stormlight Archive series. This is an adult fantasy series, has multi-perspectives, and it is set in this world where there is just a constant cycle of wars. This cycle can be like thousands of years, but there are certain signs that show whenever this just huge world society changing war is going to happen. And we don't know much about the past happenings because every time this happens, it like destroys technology, it destroys societal advances. There is just so much to this series. My favorite character is Kaladin. He's the best sad boy ever in a series. We follow Kaladin who goes from being a physician in training to a soldier to a slave. So we follow him on his journey and his self growth. Um, I'll just mention him real quickly because he's my favorite, but so much has happened in this series. It's going to be a large series. This is by Brandon Sanderson. I am forgetting to mention these authors, but Brandon Sanderson, in my opinion, cannot write a bad book from what I've read of his backlog so far. I'm so excited for this book. I've had it pre-ordered for weeks and it comes out November 17th and I intend to take it out of the box and start reading right away. I'll also mention another new release coming out that I was not aware of until recently, but it's a David Sedaris book and it's kind of like a greatest hits kind of book, I believe, but he is a humorist and he just takes different stories from his past, his childhood, his early adulthood, his current adulthood and he just puts such a humorous spin on them and from his story it's a lot of good analysis of society and of humans and their inner workings and i've just really liked his books his favorite of mine has been let's explore diabetes with owls that was the first one i read i really liked calypso and uh when you are engulfed in flames was good his diary entries all excellent can't wait for this book which I believe will be like his very best stories question four is what are three books you want to read before the end of the year definitely rhythm of war definitely kingdom of ash and then also what I have kind of been hoarding is I have the three books in Catherine Arden's winter night trilogy on audible and I'm not sure if they are young adult or adult fantasy but they are set in Russia in a very cold climate in the winter time. And we follow our main character who I think her name's Vasya, but she comes into some magical abilities in a time where society is trying to push back their magical heritage and focus more on like current religion in this world in this time period. I heard it's loosely set around 1400s, 1500s Russia. So I've heard it's a, a great winter read if you want to feel cold when you're reading a book. Question five, is there a book you think could shock you and become your favorite of the year? Maybe. I mean, I'm, I know I'm going to love Rhythm of War. I know I'm going to love Kingdom of Ash more than likely. So those wouldn't really be shocking. What would be shocking is if some of the thrillers that I am reading right now in October would become my favorites just because with thrillers, in my history of reading them, I either love them and completely blown away and shocked or I am like let down and a little disappointed. So maybe if like a thriller that I read is just incredible. This year has been the year of reading random books that are cheap on Kindle. So from like indie romance authors, I've read a lot of Kate Stewart and Penelope Douglas and Colleen Hoover this year. If I just pick up a random Kindle book that I don't have incredibly high expectations for going into and just completely love it, that might be a book that would become my favorite before the end of the year. And the last question, question six, is have you already started making reading plans for 2021? I don't have solid plans, but I do still want to do my 52 book goal on Goodreads. I do want to still film YouTube videos. I would say my favorite genre is fantasy, but I would not say that I am very well versed in a lot of popular fantasy series. So I want to read some more fantasy series. I want to 
go further back into Brandon Sanderson's backlog. There's so many of his books I haven't read, like the continuation of the Mistborn trilogy, um, the Alloy of Law series. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's the first book. I have so many books on my shelf that I haven't touched. I want to get into some of those. My goal for 2021 should be to buy fewer books, focus on mainly new releases, and read all these books that I've accumulated on my shelves, but to just keep up with it, to keep up with my Kindle habit that I've developed, and to have a good time. All right, you guys, these have been the books I want to read before 2021. Leave a comment down below and let me know your reading goals that you want to meet by the end of the year. Let me know some of your favorite books that you've read. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.